guys, it's Jessie here from Tonkadel Greenhouse and today we're doing Kokodama. All right, Kokodama is simply a moss ball. So what we're gonna do is encase a plant in a ball of special soil, cover it in moss and wrap it tight. I think we can do it. First things first, a few of the supplies that we are going to need are the following. We're gonna use potting soil, just your all-purpose potting soil, and then we're gonna use some of the bonsai soil. The bonsai mix here has a little bit more clay in it, so that creates kind of a nice sticky substance. We're gonna mix these at a rate of basically one to one, so half and half. Go a little heavier on the potting soil, um, just at the end after you add water, to even it all out. So I have some premix here, and I did add water, however, maybe a little too much. So I'm gonna add back uh, a little bit of the potting soil. Mix with the trowel, or your hands. It should feel about the consistency of cookie dough. So when you press it together in a ball, sticks to itself. Yeah, that looks good. I love bromeliads. Everybody knows I love bromeliads. Bromeliads are one of the easiest plants to care for. They like bright and direct light, but can tolerate a low light condition. Uh, and they tolerate drying out quite well. So this is a great candidate for a kokodama. Let's just take this out of the pot. Check out those roots, nice and healthy. We'll set you aside. Pick a sort of fabric or a cloth. Today we're going to use cheesecloth to form a little packet around our root ball. So I'm thinking this should be enough. You could make like little ghosties and things. Halloween. Take a moment to wake up the roots. I can kind of bust up the top of the plant. We're going to make this into a spear shape. There's lots of really nice soil already included with this bro. Bro is the short shorthand for bromeliad. Here we go. Plop you on the cheesecloth and then I'm just gonna work around my plant with my soil. Make it into a nice sphere shape. And don't worry, because we can manipulate the shape when we're all done. All right, so that looks awesome. Fold up the corners of my cheesecloth. So as you can see, I'm just kind of wrapping it, gathering it and wrapping it. This creates a nice package. Okay, that looks amazing. Little packet. I have some sheet moss here. So this sheet moss was once living and is now not. It's preserved and dyed. So you can use moss that has not been dyed, but I would use moss that has been preserved. Because it's been dyed, the color does bleed when it gets wet. Just be careful when you're putting it on or above the surface because you don't want to have green drips on your antique table. Pick out some pieces of moss to work with. You can wet them down or use them dry. We're going to use 15 pound test. And this is more than strong enough. Fishing line to secure our moss. You could use jute or hemp, cotton rope, um, something else that you can actually see. But with the fishing line, it kind of creates this illusion of just general suspension, right? And we'll just start gathering the moss around the top of our ball. Doesn't have to be perfect because we'll tighten it as we go. So whatever way you figure, I'm just gonna go around with this fishing line, tie a knot. I feel like that's pretty tight. can't really see the fishing line. There's no right or wrong. If you were using a jute or a cotton cord, you might 
do some sort of a geometric design. You might do the fishing line first and then when you have a little more control over the ball, bring in the hemp or jute string. You can even use copper wire to kind of adorn the ball. Oh my gosh, this is looking so awesome. Making it look easy, folks. Wow, it's not often that I blow my own mind. So I'm just gonna tie the end kind of to itself wherever I find a good opening. So how do you take care of one of these moss balls, you say? Well, think about the light requirements of your plant. I picked a pretty easy plant to care for just because I know I'm a busy person and I'm not always on top of the watering at home. So I know that a bromeliad will tolerate drying out, which it'll do much quicker in the moss ball than it would say if it was in a ceramic pot because there's a lot more air exchange here. So I'm thinking we'll water this about every seven days in the house and I would take it to the sink, water it really well, let it drain and dry a bit and then return it to its place in the home. And so options for displaying your kokodama are many. I have this really cute hanging saucer that would work really well. Set our kokodama here. It could even be sideways. I mean, that looks kind of cool too. It's kind of like facing out so you can see it better. Then I can just tie this to the height that I like, hang it from a hook. Other options would be just kind of create a hanger out of the fishing line, which is really cool because then they kind of hang as though they're invisible. I have an example here. This is an example of a six inch Monstera Deliciosa that we kokodamaed early in the week. It just got watered, so it's pretty heavy. But this one's just hanging on a simple fishing line hanger. Set or group kokodama on a saucer or a plate, a decorative plate. That would be really cute. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at Tonkadale.